Hey guys, welcome to Biker Talk. I'm riding again in the Distinguished Gentleman's Ride this year with the Wollongong crew. I'll put a link in the description to my donations page. I hope you enjoy this video with Sue and her favourite bike, her Yamaha MT-07. Or maybe it's her Honda 4. Or maybe it's her Honda GB. You know what? I'll just hand over to Sue. I'm Sue Skaysbrook and I've been riding for 50 years. My sister Chris Froville, she rode and uh, she actually wrote for Revs magazine and uh, she's a few years older than I am but I just really liked her lifestyle so I thought motorcycling's for me too when I was 16 and 9 months and could get my licence. <laughs> Uh, it was a little um, Honda SL175, um, I had that first and uh, then I upgraded to the, um, the um, Honda 4. I bought it at Sid Smart's at Chatswood <laughs> and the salesperson was Brian Martin. Brian had moved from Sid Smart's to Jim's um, shop at Gladesville so I took it in there and um, uh, basically the boss handled the, the customer so I didn't get to speak to Brian that day but <laughs> and basically Jim and I have been together ever since. Uh, the MT-07 is my road bike um, which I just think is the best little thing on two wheels and the GB for um, rallying and also the CB500 for, for rallying as well. It's a toss up. It's a toss up between the GB and the MT07. Oh, but then the CB is pretty gorgeous too. So, <laughs> oh, I just think it is such a beautiful, balanced bike. It's a perfect ladies' bike. You know, you've got the you can touch the ground, which is always really important for anybody, I think, to be able to touch the ground. It has more power than I will ever need. It's light. It's manoeuvrable and it just looks peachy. So I just love being on it, love it. Oh, the GB is just, just it's just a sexy little bike. It goes so well. It's on the, on the rallies, on the open roads of the Central West, which is a particular favourite of mine, the place to ride. It was just stunning last year. It was so wonderful. Um, our friends from Melbourne came up and uh, Bob had his Norton and Bob and I raced around the Central West last year. It was fantastic fun. <laughs> I think I've got more, more into it again over the last 20 years, you know, through the rallying and, uh, you know, which I really love. I love going on rallies and, and I have my GB500 behind me which um, I adore, <laughs> so it's, yes, but I love road riding as well. Oh look, in the 70s um, there were a, quite a number of uh, lady riders and, and there, were a, there was a group of really good role models for women. You know, people like Peggy Hyde, Linda uh, Cowper, God rest her soul, uh, and many others. Um, so we did have a really good core of, of very good uh, motorcycling women. Um, but it was different. Um, I remember a time when I was targeted by police on my way to work. I was pulled up oh, four times in one week going to work. Um, they just knew that I was, a, I was a girl on a motorcycle. I, I was never booked. Um, and that really got up my nose. Um, but, but otherwise, n there was nothing really um, other, you just had to be a decent rider. I mean, if you weren't a decent rider, well, you, sh you should go away and learn. I was never worried. Uh, I had great faith in his ability. Um, so it was a, an exciting time, absolutely, particularly when we went to the Isle of Man. It was fantastic. But uh, no, I was never particularly worried. I just. I got a little bit worried when he didn't come across the, the uh, finish line when he was supposed to in the first uh, time we were there, but 
Uh, fortunately, it was not too horrific. Um, but yeah, I just have always um, uh, loved the way he rides. Um, he's, he's had a particular style about his riding that has never scared me. <laughs> oh, it was the best fun. It was just the best fun. Um, I have two lounges in the front, two Chesterfield lounges in, the, in our front room, which I will never sell because Mike slept on those lounges. <laughs> But he was just the most lovely man. Uh, you know, it was completely devastating when he died. And he was just a really beaut person and poetry in motion on a bike. He was just fantastic. So it was, you know, the 70s were just a great period of our lives. You know, there was so much going on and wonderful friends who were all bound together by motorcycling, uh, really creative people. Um, you know, uh, writers, artists, uh, musicians, brilliant photographers. We just had the best fun. We'd be out, you know, every weekend. Um, Sydney Showground Speedway was a must on a Saturday night and, and it was, you know, we had a ball. S the 70s were the time of our lives. <laughs> well, uh, Rennie he was just a racer before I think he was even born. And he, he has been on two wheels since he was such a tiny little boy. Um, we always knew that he was going to be racing. That was all he ever wanted to do at school. And I always used to say, I wish there was a subject in the high school certificate that was devoted to motorcycling because he would have just shooted in. <laughs> but we, we have always been a motorcycling family. Um, on Jim's side, of course, there was his father and his brother, mother, um, June also rode. Um, my side of the family, my sister rode. And now, now, of course, there's Rennie and his little boy, Harvey, is already riding two wheels on motor, motorcycle two wheels. So I think it's just going to continue on and on and on. <laughs> it's just the way we Skaysbrooks are. <laughs> Matchless G50. Um, we've had the original, which unfortunately we had to sell. And then the second one, our friends in Melbourne, Bob Rosenthal, races the, the, G, the, um, the Matchless now. Um, and it is, we, we basically are um, the, the G50 groupies that just follow the Matchless wherever he rides. And it's just the most wonderful association with that bike. And um, so if I could have another uh, matchless G50 in the garage, I would be very, very happy. I think through America. Um, we haven't done any riding through America. Jim, of course, is, um, has been through it, you know, across it many times. We've, I, I, we've certainly been there, but I've never ridden. And uh, our friends from Melbourne, Bob and Lynn Rosenthal, they've done a lot of riding over there and they said it's just fantastic. The roads are brilliant and, uh, and it's such a diverse country. So I, I would really love to do some riding over there. Well, I think certainly for new riders these days is to get some proper um, training, tuition on, on riding on the road because it is a dangerous pastime, there's no doubt about it. Um, but also to ride within your limits. You, you know, if you're going in group um, rides, that's fantastic, but don't get sucked into being faster than you really want to be. And also, of course, is just to be so completely aware of what's going on around you. Uh, you can't trust that someone else is going to see you. Um, you have to be really on the ball when you're on, a, on two wheels. The freedom of it, really. Um, I just love being on the bike inside my helmet. With We don't do Bluetooth or anything like that. I just love the, the solitude of being inside my helmet and my own thoughts and just riding along and being within the environment. You know, you just, you smell things as you ride along and you, and you can, it, it's just so completely different to being in a car. And I just, I've, I've loved it for 50 years and I know I'll continue to love it for a long time yet. <laughs> I 
I hope you enjoyed Sue's video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And remember, you can't buy happiness, but you can ride a motorcycle, and that's kind of the same thing.